Welcome to In Your Neighborhood, I'm Jennifer Wakeman. Our first stop today takes us to Bloomsburg, where I'm getting a lesson in how to make soap. Leslie Chadwick's search for a better bar of soap was the impetus behind Dutch Hill Soap Company. Well, I, I always wanted to try, you know, all natural soap. It always seemed uh, a nice thing and stuff. And, and anywhere I went and bought it, it would get mushy or it would, it would have like strawberry scents to it, which aren't natural and that type of stuff. And, uh, and it was expensive. Uh -huh. And so I said, well, you know what? I could probably do this. After a lot of research into soap making and trying out a simple soap making kit, Leslie started to develop her own recipe that would produce the kind of soap she wanted. And I started, you know, looking into seeing, you know, what oils are best for the skin, what makes a nice hard bar of soap that lathers up very nicely, and uh, and I came up with this recipe. It's my own recipe of oil, olive oil predominantly and uh, coconut oil, just enough that it lathers up real nice, but it doesn't uh, cross the threshold of, of stripping your skin. Of its, uh, of its oils and, mm -hmm. uh, and palm oil. Chadwick didn't necessarily intend to start a business with her soap. And I started giving it away to people <laughs> as gifts and all that stuff. And, you know, people say, you know, I could really use another bar of that soap. And, I said, well, you know, it does cost money to make. And, oh, well, we'll give you money for it. And so here I am. That was 2003. Today, Dutch Hill soap comes in 20 different flavors. Many of them have aromatherapy grade essential oils in them, but for those folks that are sensitive to fragrances, she also has an oatmeal and honey soap that is fragrance free. And it's all natural. I don't put any artificial fragrances. I don't put any artificial colorings or anything like that. It's all mm -hmm. uh, aromatherapy grade essential oils, um, herbs, spices, fruit zest, whatever the flavor happens to be at the time. It Chadwick buys many of the ingredients for her soap locally. The honey comes from there's some some hive, there's a hive down there in the yard that uh, oh, wow. someone keeps, and it, oh it's about this high. <laughs> it's huge. Yeah, the bees love this place. And, and I get my goat's milk from one of the women at the Forks Farm Market. And, nice. Uh, it milks her goats, so I know that's nice, clean, pesticide-free uh, goat's milk. I cool. get uh, my herbs from a woman that sells herbs next to me. At, at the market, she dries herbs, mm -hmm. the lemongrass and rosemary and different things I put in. You know, if she can keep up with with what I'm with what I'm doing and, and supply me with that quantity, then, mm -hmm. then I'm more than happy to support the the local uh, people that uh, that are at the market. The market Chadwick refers to is Forks Farm Market in Orangeville, where Dutch Hill soap is sold two Saturdays a month, spring through fall. It can also be found at stores around the area like Bloom Naturally and Sunlight Feed and Pet Supply in Bloomsburg, as well as the Geisinger Medical Center gift shop. Dutch Hill Soap is also the guest soap at the Irondale Inn in Bloomsburg. Before we got down to actually making soap, I needed to understand the basic chemistry of soap making. Soap is created when lye comes into contact with fat at about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That sounds simple enough. The first step is to heat up the oils. I just have to get the oils up to the temperature, the lye's up to the temperature now. Uh, I put that together last night. Mm -hmm. I usually like to put the lye together the night before and because the lye is an uh, uh, exothermic reaction, so it, when you add water to it, it heats up okay. to like 200 and some degrees. Wow. So it's, uh, and the fats don't take that long to melt and, and, and come up to well, oh, roughly about 100 degrees is what I like to make my soap at. Okay. And so it takes longer for the lye to cool down than it does for the fats to heat up. So I usually like to do it the night before. The oils we're using are Leslie's recipe of olive, coconut, and palm oil. Because you were saying that everything has to be the same temperature? Everything has to be the same temperature. What happens if it's not? Um, it doesn't blend quite so well. Okay. Because it's a one-to-one -one reaction, mm -hmm. which is why we're going to stir. We're actually going to stir with a, with a mixer. Um, the, uh, the fat molecules, every fat molecule is converted to soap with every, uh, every lye molecule. So oh, it's okay. one, one reaction. Okay. And you have to actually cause them to collide in order to have the soap combine the, uh, the oils and the, the lye combine and actually make the soap. Oh, okay. You don't actually convert all of the oil into soap. Mm -hmm. You do want to leave a residual amount of fat in the soap, otherwise it would be 
you know, kind of like what, what people's grandparents would make for cleaning floors and what have you, mm -hmm. or stripping the mm -hmm. oils and stuff. So you do leave a percentage of fat in the soap. So you have to do a, like a calculation uh, as far as uh, how much lye you and how much uh, fat you want to leave in the soap. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, too much, it, it could go rancid, not enough, it could Strip your skin. Fortunately, Leslie had already done the math and knew exactly how much of each ingredient we would be needing. In order to create the reaction, we were going to have to do a lot of mixing. Olive oil soaps, you really need to move the molecules quickly in order to get them to collide to actually make soap. Once the oils and the lye were at the same temperature, we were ready to start making soap, but not before we donned our safety equipment. We're making peppermint soap because it's very simple and it smells fantastic. I'm um, putting a specific amount of lye water into the specific amount of fats in order to make a soap. I'm actually pouring a specific amount of peppermint essential oil. When you make soap, you need to be careful as to the products that you use for uh, making the soap in. You don't want to use any plastic products, you don't want to use any aluminum products because the lye will react with oh, those right. particular things. You want stainless steel, you want glass, you want plastic for the most part. I put the blender in, I take my nice jar of lye and just pour it in. And... You have gloves on and things, you want to keep it on high. Sure. And you kind of want to. Around and around. Yeah, kind of like you're making a cake. Okay. Or pudding. Whatever. Is now the time to tell her that I'm a really bad baker? <laughs> I'm a great cook. I'm a rotten baker. Such a bad baker. You want to yeah, make sure you keep moving it around. Well, you can already feel it starting to, I mean, it definitely thickens up. Mm -hmm. You can see the color start to change, and what you want to do is you want to move it around until you get something about the consistency of a uh, of pudding. Oh wow, not, it's going to get to pudding. Not, not quite that that heavy. Sometimes it but does happen. There. It depends because some you know once you put the essential oil in, sometimes the reaction speeds up. If you use uh, honey, it'll speed the reaction up. Mm -hmm. But you can see now how it's starting yep. to get a swirl up to it. Leslie was watching for a trace when the soap leaves a marking on the top of the mixture. This is an important indicator of the reaction between the fat and the lye. Now you want to get to that trace before you add the final ingredients of your, your herb and your scent to it. We stopped several times to see how our soap was doing. Yeah, and we're getting there. That's actually a trace. See how it's almost like a, a pudding there? Oh where you yeah, can get you can the... see it sort of lays there okay. from where you... So then we'll take our herb, okay. we'll put our herb in, and we don't want to we don't want to move it around too much at this point because we don't want to speed it up because if, if the reaction goes too fast at the end here, it'll seize on you. And then what happens? Oh, it just doesn't look pretty. Uh, A lot of times, you, I mean, you can work with it, but it'll separate it. It just won't look pretty. So that's the peppermint herb. Ah. It's an organic peppermint herb. Essential oil we're going to put in. And we're going to do everything slowly at this point because once you add these ingredients, oh, you can smell that. Things kind of speed up a little bit. And I found that if you let it go too far, that uh, you get a lot of ash on the top of it. It doesn't really look pretty. It looks like you let it go too far. Now it's time to pour our soap into the mold. Leslie has made all of her own molds so that she gets the uniform size she wants for her bars. This mold will produce 24 bars of soap. Then we put the lid on. And now th that was a primary reaction that we did. Okay. So what we do then is with the lye soap is you insulate it. That's what this fleece is for. Because what happens is you have a secondary reaction where this heats up to, oh, it gets to a molten kind of phase overnight. Hmm. You want to leave it about 24 hours in this, in this condition. At the end of 24 hours, this soap will have hardened and the large block will look something like this. The block is then cut into logs just like this one and they are placed on a shelf to cure. The curing process is a very important step. And, and after we make it, it does take about a, uh, a month to cure. Oh, wow. 
it, so you, so if you ever go somewhere and they're making stuff and they go here have a bar you don't want to use it for a while because uh, okay. it takes the lye about a month in order to dissipate out of it and uh, uh, for, the, okay. for the pH to come down. And but the, but the lye thinking. converts the fat into the soap. So it, it does the reaction, right. but it's, it's not it's, left it's, over it's when there. I'm putting it in the shower. Exactly. It's gone. Exactly. It's there mainly for the reaction, mm -hmm. only for the reaction. And then, of course, is it, it, it's still pretty wet and uh, moist, the soap is. Mm -hmm. So you want to leave it pure. In, mm -hmm. in the air so that it dries out mm -hmm. and the lye water that, that was in it just just leaves. Leslie showed us how she cuts the blocks into logs and the logs into bars. Slicing into this log, I could see why curing the soap is so important. Feel in here, feel. You can feel how sticky that is. Oh yeah, oh, That's definitely why. different There's from not. those right. that have already been sitting. Right, so it gives you a little bit more control. Over it. I mean, it's it's cured pretty much to that little spot right there. Oh, look but at it's that! You can little, really see that. It's still a little sticky. Mm -hmm. So if that'll set, you know, for it only maybe take a week, mm -hmm. that'll harden over and be mm -hmm. fine. The hardness of the soap is key to how long it will last. The palm oil in Chadwick's recipe is what makes her soap very hard. When you're That's when you're buying a natural bar of soap, hard. you want to feel how hard it is because that lets you know how cured it is. Mm -hmm. or how long it's going to last. Wow. The other thing you want to do is you want to make sure if you use it, you let it dry. So if there's somewhere in the shower where you can put it on something that'll let mm -hmm. air get around it, you want to rinse it off when you're finished so there's no uh, foam and stuff like that on it, and you mm -hmm. want to set it so it'll dry between uses. Dutch Hill soaps are available in 4-ounce shower size bars as well as smaller 2-ounce bars. Chadwick's commitment to preserving the environment even extends to her packaging. My packaging is all recycled. I use recycled vaccine bags. My labels are recycled using soy-based inks. Leslie sent me home with a bar of lavender and oatmeal soap, and I have to say, it was the nicest soap I've ever used. I bet you can guess what my family and friends are getting for Christmas. And if you want to try Dutch Hill soaps or get them as a gift for someone, visit one of the local vendors or her website, www.dutchhillsoap.com, to see all the available flavors and to place an order.